Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits and welcome to my channel. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this week I have another gel printing video for you. I'm out here amongst all my stencils on my work table with my gel plate just playing and layering, 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 layering and being inspired by a color combination that I found in my closet. So if you got a few minutes, let's go check it out. So today I am using my traditional two Speedball six inch brayers. And I just wanted to show you that this one, I just peeled all the paint off of. It was filthy dirty, just like this one, but I just peeled all the paint off of it with really very little effort. Um, I didn't even soak it first. Uh, sometimes I'll soak these in um, Murphy's oil soap diluted in water overnight to peel them. Um, but this one, I didn't even have to soak first. So because it had a little lip where uh, it stuck to the other one, and it gave me just a little something that I could pull, and I thought maybe this one would work as well, so I could show you. And there you have it. Two brand new, perfectly clean brayers. That is what you get when you buy a Speedball Deluxe Brayer, and that's why I like this brand. So then now that I have two clean brayers, my next step is to clean all this residual paint off of my plate. So I'm going to be using my all-time favorite rice paper. It's the sketch paper um, in the pad. It is 9 by 12. Um, it's sturdy and durable. It's not thin and it is sized on one side. So the side that's facing up in the pad towards you has a smooth side. It has been treated with sizing, and that's the side that you wanna put down onto the plate because this smoothness combined with the tackiness of the surface of the plate is gonna pull all the paint off and pretty much bring us back to clean. Um, so, this rice paper also comes in a 12 by 18 pad. It has the same logo on the front, but it is not the same paper. Neither side has any sizing on it. So you want to specifically look for this 9 by 12 pad, and I will put the link to it below because once you use this sketch paper, this rice paper for your gel printing and then subsequently your collage, gluing it down is a dream because it's highly absorbent. Um, using it for gel printing is awesome because it pulls all the paint off the plate. And also because it's highly absorbent, we can soak color through the back of it and let it bleed all the way through the front. So this paper does a lot of neat things and even with all kinds of water, it's real durable because it's thick. So. That is why, uh, just a few reasons why I love that rice paper. So I stored my plate folded in half, which is why it's got a wrinkle to it. So do as I say, not as I do. Put it back in your clamshell. Um, I flipped it in half and thought that I would be back out here to straighten it out. And I got sidetracked and it got left that way. But um, we'll see what happens. So I'm using green gold um, and I'm just rolling it out and trying to kind of moisturize it into all this area of crusted paint from a previous session. Now I'm going to take that smooth side and put it down into the plate. And the idea here is to just get as much paint off as I can so I can bring it to a pretty clean starting point for this lesson. And I thought it would be a nice opportunity to show you that you don't need to run this plate underwater or use baby wipes or use lots of tape. Um, if you can just pull a print on the rice paper pad before you put it away, you're gonna get most of it clean. And then you just barely have to do a little bit. Now this is on here a little hard because it's been a few weeks since I've used it. Always put it away clean. I mean, if you're gonna use it the next day, you can leave it messy, but when you're going to not use it for a while, always put it away clean. And may I also just say, look at this. Well, it's already got green on it, but um, without that one, look at this. This never happens, but I'm going on vacation next week and I have already got green on one of them. But anyway, um, yeah, so I'm going to try to keep these clean. Good luck with that. All right, so this is going to pull up 
all the previous print. It, around the edges is sometimes tricky and you can pinch that off because it gets to be a thick buildup. Or you can get that off with the tape. But here we go. I pretty much pulled all that residual blue. This will be a good base for another print. I've got very barely leftover stuff in the middle here. So, and then um, I would take the tape and get to the edges so I can show you that. I'm gonna use uh, Scotch heavy duty shipping tape with the dispenser. I'm just gonna put it around the edges because the middle is clean. I'm gonna pile a decent amount of pressure. And here is our tape is just taking all that thick crusty stuff off around the edges. I wanted to do another lesson in being inspired by clothing as your color palette. So a lot of times people don't know what kind of color combinations to make their gel prints in. And I have suggested looking in your closet because in your closet are all kinds of beautifully designed fabrics and odds are they're in color combinations that appeal to you. That's why you bought them in the first place. So what a wonderful way to find inspiration for color palettes in your closet or in your interior design. What have you got for throw pillows on your couch? What are the color combinations in your comforter? Things like that. You can be inspired to make some different combinations, something that you don't typically do. So my um, blouse here has got sort of a, a pinkish color. It's got green gold. It's got um, sort of a little bit of an off-white and a, uh, a gray that I think I would use a Payne's gray for. So the colors that I'm going to use are going to be the green gold and then sort of a paler version of that, the tight and green pale. You could see where those would both go in here. I've got primary magenta for the pink. And I've got titanium white to lighten it all up. So my background color here is a little bit of an off white. So I think I will make that by blending a little bit of titanium into the green pale so that I'm not on a bright white sheet of paper, but so that I get this sort of muted off white. So these are the colors that I'm going to use. And I'm also going to be pressing some color through the holes in a stencil. And for that, I'm going to use my mini ink blender tool with the domed foam insert. So the domed foam I like because the dome keeps it from printing this circular edge around the insert. But there is a flat insert that looks like this. And if that's what you have, you can make it work, but it just is more likely you're going to get this circular edge, whereas the dome, because it's raised up in the center, you don't get the circular edge as much. And you can wash these out and refill and reuse them many, many times. You, if, as long as you get to the paint while it's wet, it washes out great. And it adheres with Velcro. And this is going to allow us to put some color through some areas of stencils and masks to create this really luxuriously layered pattern. So the first one that I'm using is called Deconstructed Daisies. And I'm going to use with that, I think, a little of Ziggity Zaggity. So I'm going to use these two, a stencil and a mask. They're on the mylar and the hooks from my hanging system. If you haven't seen my storage hanging system, I'll link that up in the upper right hand corner. It's a great video on how to store your stencils so you can see them through plastic mylar, but so that they don't get tangled with each other. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is print a light colored solid using that same pad of sketch paper, rice paper. And I'm gonna do two, one for extra good measure. So that's the base color that I said I would make slightly off white. So I'm gonna use the titanium white to lighten up the Titan Green Pale. And I'm gonna roll that out with my newly cleaned six inch brayer. So perfect. And you can see how it's pulling all the paint off the plate except for right around the edges. And we've got this nice, pale color that is a little bit more green than the background of this, but I like it. Okay, 
So the next step is to add, we're gonna work from light to dark. So the first thing I'm gonna add is gonna be the green gold. And I'm going to add that through this ziggity zag mask with the domed foam. And then I'm going to just dip it and put it in some areas of this mask so we get some of the shapes but not covering the whole print. So then we're gonna lift this up and the pattern will then transfer onto our light colored solid. And there's still some paint left on the plate so I'm gonna flip this in the opposite direction and print it again. And then I'm just gonna press the paper where I see the paint. And now I have some of those zigzags in a more random kind of organic arrangement because I put the paint through with the blender tool. There we go. And then the next layer in working from light to dark from the green gold is going to be the pink and the primary magenta. And I'm gonna do the same thing here with the dark primary magenta, but I've got two shades of that. I've got like a, a light and a dark. So I'm going to do the first with a light and swirl that around and then roll it out. You want to swirl it to blend it and then roll it out. Put the daisies in here because I don't want the full flood of this pink. I just want the ghost print. So I'm going to use that extra sheet to pick up the full print, a little bit too much paint. So I'm going to grab another cleanup sheet and take some more paint out of there so that we can get the ghost print. That's what I'm after because it's uh, less coverage. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to bring back this sheet and I'm going to lift up the deconstructed daisies and use the ghost print over our first layer. So now we've got this really nice ghost print of the pink with the green gold and the light Titan background. So I'm just going to use another cleanup sheet to see if I can get this off. There we go. So we're right back to clean in the middle print area. So the next color is going to be the darker version of the primary magenta. So we go from the pink to sort of the darker. So this time I'm going to put that through the deconstructed daisies with the domed foam tool, the mini ink blender. So I'm going to put this out pretty straightforward, just the paint without any white in it. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the zigzaggy. Okay. So now I'm going to lift that and I'm going to grab this and print. So now I've got some of that dark color with the pink and the Titan green and the green gold. So now I'm feeling like I want to bring back some of the greenish because it's gotten pretty heavy in the pink. Grab my other brayer so that I don't get pink in my green. So I'm going to put the green gold, but I'm going to mix it with some of the Titan green pale because this is an opaque color. It will lighten up the green gold and because it's opaque, it will go on top of the pink. So now we've got a green gold that's opaque and a little bit lighter than what we did on the bottom. So I'm going to bring back the zigzaggy and I'm going to put this in here very lightly at first see if I can get some light coverage. I like that. And now I'm going to flip it the other direction and press it lightly again. And now I'm interrupting some of that pattern with some more of the green gold. I feel like I want some more on this edge. So I'm just going to press that through around the edges. and on this edge. And now I'm going to use a little bit of the Titan Green Pale with the 
mini ink blender. So I'm gonna come back to the green one. I'll just add the green one on here. With the zigzaggy. And do the same thing, applying just a little bit of the Titan Green Pale through some random areas. Okay, so we'll lift that and we'll add that right on top of this. And I'm gonna flip it. And I'm just gonna keep moving the sheet, see if I can get that white up. Like I said, white, anything with white grabs a little bit, but the nice thing about this paper is it's sturdy, it's not tearing when I press it and lift it. I'm gonna even go out to the edges here, see if I can get some of that crust off. You can see that just applying pressure when the paint isn't too old is picking it up from the edges as well. So we're back to clean and we've got some interesting stuff going on around here. And we've lost the pink a little bit. So now we're gonna bring the pink back. So I'm going to do a little bit of the primary magenta and a little bit of white and come back with my pink brayer This is what I call the push-pull. We have to bring the pink back and then push it back with the green and then bring it back again sometimes before we get it a really good balance. So here I'm going to lightly press and move and press and move. I'm just picking up areas of this pink. It's going to come a little heavier than with the mini ink blender, so you want to touch very lightly. But the idea is to just get some of the areas with a light touch and that's looking pretty good. And then the next thing is to do the pink without any white. And I'm gonna do that right here, dabbing through. And we're gonna press that and flip it and press it again. I really like to flip the directions and press the ghost print. And then I'm gonna come in here and just pick up the rest of it by moving my paper around. Now the key to all of this is layers, many layers, and you don't have to do them exactly like I'm doing them. You can do them in different orders with different combinations. So as you know, with layering, the idea is to push and pull and push and pull. And when I say that, I mean, bring a color forward and then knock it back. And then maybe it's knocked back too far and then bring it forward again. So the idea with layering is understanding how to combine colors over and under each other so that they have a real good presence and you have enough of the colors that you want. So you can never have enough layers. So here we've got lots of great colors, lots of great layers, some wonderful things happening. I've lost my light area that we started with in here. So I'm gonna come back and add the white with the brayer with the green in it. There's not too much green in there. Just add a little bit of the Titan Green Pale and I'm gonna come back to that original color because I wanna bring some more white in. I feel like I've lost all the white so I'm going to use the zigzaggy and press lightly because that's heavy coverage and then switch the direction. And that's bringing me in some white. Okay, so the next step is the Payne's Gray because now we have the green and the white and the pink. And I even feel as though I could put a little more green gold in there and I think I'm gonna do it just with the mini ink blender so I can lightly bring some of that green gold back in here. Perfect. I'm sorry, I didn't put this color out at first. This is Payne's Gray and white. That's gonna make for a nice bluish gray. 
that's gonna pick up the gray blue in the blouse. Could be a little darker. I'm gonna bring the deconstructed daisies mask back in. And this time I'm just gonna carefully press and lift and move, pressing sections of the stencil just to bring in some of this pattern in the gray, but not super heavy coverage. So have a look at it, move it around, grab it in some of the more intricate parts of the stencil where there's lots of little lines to add texture and pattern. So we're just getting some wonderful colors. And I think we're pretty close to this. So it's layering and it's pushing and pulling. It's using parts of the stencils. It's using the brayers and the mini ink blender and realizing when you look at it that you lost the green, you need to bring the green back. You've got too much pink, you need to push the pink back. So we've really uh, captured this palette, I think right here, using two stencils, the zigzaggy mask and the deconstructed daisies mask and the one and only pad of rice paper that I recommend. And here we've got an interesting color combination that I would have probably never done if it hadn't been for this blouse. So there you have it. Thank you for being here with me this week. Thank you for being inspired by something from my closet. I encourage you to check out your socks, your throw pillows, your dish towels, or anything else you have around the house that might give you some creative, colorful inspiration. Thanks for being here, and I'll see you right back here next week.